And now, ladies and gentlemen, here she is, Kathy Griffin! You came on a good night. We got a lot of shit to talk about. All right. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay. First of all, I, this is hot off the presses. I've had a Lindsay Lohan run in. Yes. Did I hear the gay gasp? I thought I heard the, yes, it's true. I did. Um, all right. First of all, uh, here's, here's my backstory on Lohan. I like her and here's why. I think she actually has a job. Like she's really genuinely a movie star, right? The other party girls, I don't quite get, right? Nicole Richie's the one I don't get, <laughs> right? She's famous. She's a household name. And yet she's like, I'm the adopted daughter of a pop star and I don't care to eat. <laughs> That's all she's bringing to the table. Uh, certainly not food, but I, I do enjoy her mugshot. I love that mugshot that, it's cute. Like she got the cute little sideways bangs and some lip liner. These celebrities are getting very smart about their mugshots now, right? Cause they know it's gonna go around the world. I love the Mel Gibson mugshot. Right? Cause he's up in the mugshot. Shot, right? I'm Braveheart. Not today, Mel. No, I love that. I'm so happy that that right wing idiot conservative homophobe went down. I'm so happy about that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Bye, Mel. So, anyway, so I'm fascinated by the Mel Gibson arrest, and here's why. I don't get how the racial epithets even came up in conversation, right? Now, I know this is just me being a dumb girl, but I swear, if I've ever been pulled over even for a broken taillight, I swear to God, I immediately burst into tears. I do, it's like a Pavlovian response. I'm just there, I don't wanna be ass raped in prison. <laughs> What's gonna happen? What, why, what? I just, you know what, I know why, because I'm a child of the 70s, and I remember those scary Linda Blair female prison movies. Remember? Remember that shit? Where they put a broomstick up her peach? I don't... That's not fun for me. I don't want that. Yeah, I get pulled over. I don't want a broomstick up my peach. Remember when there was always that one girl, come here, new fish. I don't want to... I don't want to be the new fish. So... So how did the Mel Gibson arrest go from, may I see your license and registration, to the f***ing Jews? How did that even, how did that even come up? And I'll tell you something, I, I talk a lot of shit about a lot of people. Even I don't f*** with the Jews, all right? No. I don't do it, I don't do it. I don't f*** with the Jews, the lesbians, or Barbara Walters, that's what I know. you about my low hand running. All right. So like I said, I actually respect her because she has a real job. So I was at an award show and she was a presenter. I was a presenter. I see her backstage, but you know, I don't want to approach these celebrities. I don't know who knows me, who doesn't know me. And I may have made a very harmless joke about Lindsay <laughs> that she's lost a lot of weight recently due to diet and Pilates and crack. Um, <laughs> without the diet and Pilates. <laughs> Just a little fun joke. And I see her backstage and she's with her gays and I'm with my gay. It's like a gay West Side Story. Gayer, gayer, West Side Story. Yes, exactly. And, and I, I really thought I have no business bothering this girl, but I thought my 16 year old niece Claire would die if I could get Lindsay Lohan to call her phone, right? So I decide to eat shit. I go over and I'm like, I know, it was a bad choice. So I go over and I go, um, excuse me, Lindsay. 
She looks up and she does the I'm not worthy. And she goes, oh my God, you're so funny. I love you, you're hysterical, you're the bomb. I'm a bomb, you're so great. <laughs> like, she was so nice. I couldn't believe it. I said, oh wow, I didn't think you'd know who I was. She was so sweet. And I said, you know, I know people ask you this all the time. She called my niece. My niece was a rock star in her high school for a week. It was, it was so, so sweet. So she goes, are you gonna do stand-up on the show? And I said, yeah, I'm doing like five minutes. So I go and I do my set. And in my set, I make a joke about Kate Moss, who was very famously videotaped snorting cocaine, right? So I walk off stage and Lindsay's like, that was really funny, but you should have made that joke about Kate. I'm gonna see her tonight nightclub later and I'm like no like I just that's bad right if your teenage daughter is clubbing with Kate Moss like nothing good is going to happen that night right right and I'm thinking okay where's where's the parenting here where's Mrs. Lohan and then I remember I've seen pictures of the mom and the mom's one of those like modern moms right like she's a milf and, shit, and she's like hanging out you know what I mean and she's hanging out with the teenage daughter and they're dressing alike and the mom's got tight low-rise jeans and shit. And you know, my mom was never like that. My mom was never in tight jeans. My mom was in a moo moo passed out on the couch where she belongs. Yeah. It's called parenting. Um, so a couple months later, I hope you're impressed by this. A couple months later, I get invited to a party at Drew Barrymore's house. I know, I don't know her, I do not know her, I've never met her. Okay, so I'm suspicious, I think I'm being punked, right? So, I know a setup. So I do a little investigation, and it turns out that she's really having the party for one of her gays who worships me, and I was like, now it makes sense. All right, so I was like, okay, now I'll go. So I go, but I'm nervous about going to a celebrity party, so I enlist my pal, Power Gay Lance Bass. Yes, Power Gay, and his super hot boyfriend, Riken, who's insane, oh my God. He's, he's one of these gay guys that's so hot that chicks would him, they'd be like, I don't care where his dick's been. He's so hot. Oh. They're both so yummy. All right, so <laughs> I said, I can't go to this party without you. Oh, and here's the other thing. It was a theme party. Thank you for groaning. I hate theme parties too, you know? I don't want to work to go to a party. I just want some chips and dip. So, oh, and it was a toga party. Exactly, I know. And I'm thinking, I'm, I know I got to drive around LA in a fucking toga. I get pulled over. I don't want to be ass raped in a toga, you know? I don't. All right, so I get Lance and Riken to go with me, and you know the hot gays, they're all excited about going to toga party because they wear like a cocktail napkin and thread. <laughs> and they're done. Yes, they look gorgeous. All right, so we go, and I gotta tell you, once I got there, it was kind of my kind of celebrities, like um, Molly Shannon was there, and Rachel Dratch, and Amy Poehler, and Megan Mullally. I was like, okay, these, I can hang with this, right? So I'm having a great time, and Drew Barrymore was so sweet, and then in walks Lohan with the boyfriend. Right in the f***ing short shorts and little wedgie heels and shit. So I'm, I'm such a dork, I think she and I are buddies. <laughs> Let's see, hi, it's Kathy, it's Kathy Griffin. It's Lindsay, it's Martha, it's Kathy Griffin. What's going on, it's Kathy, hi, what's going on, it's Kathy. All right. All right, you guys are me, I'm Lohan, okay? <laughs> me so hard and I was like that's weird she must have heard me um, I'm not really getting it yet I'm not ready and so I turned to Lance because I know all those girls like Lance and I said okay let's walk past Lohan with our arms linked and we'll wave and see if she reacts better now that I'm with you so we link arms we walk by like this <laughs> she looks at both of us like this right I, oh and then Lance wants to leave because he's scared <laughs> right like she's gonna kick his ass and I will say this I will say I don't blame him the cokeheads can be physically unpredictable <laughs> allegedly I have no proof it's a guess I'm only guessing all right I can't stop playing with my fake hair I'm like, drunk with power with my fake hair anyway uh, and I know I'm, it's gonna be like a missing limb where when I take it out, I'm still gonna be petting it and it's not there. Um, love it. All right, so. So anyway, the kicker is that Lohan 
is the DJ at the party. Thank you for groaning. I am so with you. Since when did DJ become a vocation? Right? It's not a job. All right, there's no dental plan that goes along with DJ. It's what you do when you're drunk at the party. I want to play the Blue Oyster Cult. Come on! You know, it's not a good long-time goal. All right, so anyway, there she is, and she's got the headphones, which the kids call the cans. She's got the cans on, right? And then she's scratching like Jazzy Jeff and shit. Zip, 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 zip. I said a hip, a hop, a hippie to the hippie. Zip, 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 zip. And so it was ridiculous. Oh, I got to tell you this, though. The music coming out of the speakers didn't have any scratching. <laughs> Right? So you know they were like, you're the DJ, Lindsay. <laughs> Word up. Um, okay, so then I left, right? A couple weeks later, I go to another party, big Hollywood party, put on by Entertainment Weekly magazine for the Emmys. All these big stars are there. I had my fake hair. I had a dress, the whole thing. And I see there's Matthew Perry from Friends, and there's Lauren Graham from the Gilmore Girls and the cast of The West Wing. I'm in celebrity heaven. All right, so someone comes up to me and they go, guess what? Lindsay Lohan is the DJ here. <laughs> and once again, I'm not getting it. I go, oh, I know her. Let's go say hi. So I bolt up to the DJ booth, and I'm like banging on the plexi. Lindsay, it's Kathy Griffin. What's going on? It's Kathy. Hi, Lindsay. It's me. It's Robert. Robert, hi. Okay. She's looking at me like, bitch, back the f off, right? <laughs> Who are you? I don't know you. And I'm like, that's weird. Okay, so I know you're going to think I'm making this up, so I have to tell you the guy I was with said, I think you should know that as you walk toward the DJ booth, the party divided into two camps. <laughs> Exactly. Like, I'm going to throw down with Lindsay Lohan or something. I think it's so funny how people think I always want to, like, confront these celebrities. I'm f scared of those bitches, all right? I read about Paris Hilton getting into a fist fight with Shayna Mokler on a stairwell at a club. That's not my thing, all right? That's not fun for me. I'm not going to confront anybody. I was raised right. I talk about people behind their backs. <laughs> It's called manners. <laughs> no, I can never understand that like on the real world when they're saying, you know what? If you have something to say to me, you need to say it to my face. <laughs> I'd rather wait till you left the room. <laughs> it's more freeing for me. <laughs> and I can be funnier, so can you move it along? I'm not confronting anybody. <laughs> then this guy comes up to me and says something I'll never forget. Mary Kate would like to talk to you. So a week ago, I'm having lunch at the Polo Lounge in Beverly Hills, right? Total old school, fancy restaurant, right? With one of my attorneys. Oh, oh yes. For the shit I say about people, I am lawyered up. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I have a coterie of attorneys around me at all times. All my attorneys' kids are going to college because of me. Oh, yeah. You want to sue me? Bring it. I got a f***ing army. Come on. It's ridiculous. Oh. oh, I have to tell you this. Guess who my first amendment attorney is? He's the real guy that Edward Norton played in The People vs. Larry Flint. I got the real guy. I'm not f***ing around. I, oh, yeah. I need someone who's won a case before the Supreme Court. That's what I need. Okay, so I'm sitting there having lunch with him, and then I hear this sort of kerfuffle, and I hear someone say, oh, I want to go say hi to her. So I look up, and it's Lohan walking toward me. <laughs> I know, and I'm scared shitless. And I will say, though, I don't know, what, it was like she was a different person. She looked so healthy and normal and glowy, and she's walking toward me, and I grab my attorney's hand, and go, hey, hey, hands up! Because I'm thinking, if she starts any shit, he takes copious notes, right? And then puts it in a Ziploc bag and it's exhibit A. I don't know. In the Lindsay Lohan murder trial of comedian Kathy Griffin. So, so I, I don't know what to tell you. She comes over, kisses me on the cheek. She was so sweet. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. I was so caught off guard. This is what I said. So, keeping busy? <laughs> She's in five movies a year. She's on the cover of every magazine. Like, she's like, no, I just uh, stay home eating bonbons all day. I really do nothing. 
So then she goes, oh yeah, the paparazzi caught me on the way in. And I said, well, can I walk out with you? <laughs> so, so she was really, really lovely. Okay, so she goes to have lunch with her friend or whatever. So about 20 minutes later, I'm halfway through my Cobb salad and I come up with what I think is a very funny idea. So I call the waiter over and I said, please bring Miss Lohan the rest of my Cobb salad with my compliments. <laughs> Hence the attorneys, anyway. So, and I said, please tell her that I think the problem with young Hollywood is that they just don't eat properly. So, not funny, I know, okay, it was a bad bit. I'm not saying they're all good. So anyway, and I said, and make sure she knows I'm kidding and if she acts offended, say Kathy's kidding. Okay, so I swear, I know I make the waiter do my dirty work, isn't that terrible? I swear I could hear the bowl rattling on the tray as he walked away. He was like, It's cool, I gave him two bucks. Um, I take care of my people. Anyway, so, so he comes back about five minutes later with the salad still untouched. I finished it, it was a perfectly good salad. And a half an orange and a shot of diet soda. And he said, Miss Lohan would like you to have your calcium in a shot. That's cute, right? She was nice. All right. So I am fascinated by these girls and they're always like dancing on the pole and all these girls showing their crotch and stuff. First of all, I, very excited that we finally seen Britney's put <laughs> Finally, yeah. We have a photo, it's easily accessed on the internet. I've looked at all the p***s on the internet, I'm not gonna lie. I've looked at Paris's and Beyonce's and Britney's and I think it's great that Britney's is normal. I looked at the picture. No, because I'm still traumatized by that Janet Jackson nipple, right? It was all like veiny and had that deadbolt star bucaria in it. Ow. Um, but Britney's look very normal. Although what I don't understand is these girls, they do know that they're being photographed all the time. And yet they must be getting out of the car like this in a mini. <laughs> of every car, train, and city bus with no pants on and no one gives a shit. <laughs> I am really fascinated though by these girls that sort of work and sort of don't work and they're just clubbing all the time. So I've had a fantasy of just one time going to one of these really trendy clubs, right? All right, so I was able to go to one and it's this place on Sunset called Club Hyde, H-Y-D-E. It's where all the girls go and they all hurl and Paris is holding her hair while Nicole hurls and Lindsay lifts her skirt up and Brittany <laughs> some guy. I mean, it's where it all happens. So it turns out with these places, there's all kinds of prep, right? So there's a lot of texting and you've got to talk to the manager and be on the list, all this stuff. So one night I go with some people and I'm such a nerd that I would only go on a Tuesday night at 9 p.m. <laughs> oh, they had just opened, all right? So I'm nervous about the whole velvet rope scene. Cause like I said, I'm a child of the seventies and I remember those Studio 54 stories where there's a guy at the velvet rope and he's saying, okay, you're hot enough to get in and you're not. And I know I'm in the not list and that's not fun for me. And you know what? When I go to Applebee's, I get a table whenever I want. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, thank God I took my own car. So I pull up and there's the guy with the rope, right? So he looks at me and luckily there's been calls and texting and they don't want to let me in, but they let me in. So I'm with three other people. We walk in. We're the only people there besides the staff. I'm not kidding. <laughs> So I go right up to the bar and I said, so has Paris Hilton shown up and lifted up her skirt yet? And he goes, no. And I said, okay, keep me posted. All right, so then, then I decide to be the big spender. So I said, okay, you guys, first round is on me. Four people, I don't even drink alcohol. I get a diet soda, four drinks, 84 bucks. Oh, it fucking chapped my ass. Believe me, I was like, what's in the ice, spun gold? And, oh, and I nursed that Diet Coke all night. <laughs> The waitress would come by, shh. So, all right.
right, so they have like these booths with these leather cubes. I sit down on a leather cube and the waitress comes up to me and even the waitress is intimidating. You know what I mean? She's got the skinny legs and the new trendy outfit and stuff and she goes, um, I'm sorry, but you can't sit there. That's reserved. I said, okay, but you and I are the only ones here. And she goes, yeah, I know, but it's reserved. And I go, what is it, the Olsen twins booth? And she goes, oh my God. I was sitting at the Olsen twins booth. And let me tell you something, I'm scared of those little midgets. I am. Because they're so filthy rich, they could just cut you with $100 bills. Right? Scared. Have you seen them in pictures? The way they put their heads together, those big eyes like children of the corn? It's disturbing, disturbing. All right. So I said, well, I know what they look like. If they walk in, I'll leave. All right, so I'm sitting there, and then the door guy with the little earpiece keeps walking by and giving me the evil eye. So finally, I decide to take off. I was like, this is so uncomfortable. Okay, so I walk out. May God strike me dead if I'm making this up. There's one paparazzi photographer on the sidewalk who goes like this. at him and I just went, sorry. <laughs> All right, so a couple of weeks later, I'm doing a show in LA and in fact, Lance Bass says, I want to take you to Club Hyde tonight. I said, oh no, no, no. I was almost kicked out of Club Hyde two weeks ago. He goes, no, no, I can get you in. I know the owner. They're really excited you're coming. I was like, uh-huh. Now it's Saturday night peak time. So I'm even more nervous and I have a couple people with me. And so there's got to be a lot of texting, right? A lot of texting has to happen. And so I drive up and there's a whole crowd of people outside the door. So there's the guy with the red velvet rope, right? So I get out of my car and he goes, hey, sweetie. And I just like, okay, good, I'm in. And he goes, sweetie, I'm really sorry. We're just slammed tonight, we can't do it. I go, no, 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 there's Lance Bass and texting. There's texting that's been happening. I've been texted. So luckily some woman with blue hair comes out and saves the day and they begrudgingly let us in. All right, so I go in and it's packed and everybody's blonde and skinny and tan and perfect and I don't know what to do, so I just start dancing. <laughs> and I haven't gone dancing in like eight years, so I, I'm like, nobody else is dancing, but I think if I dance, I'll be fitting in and the more I try to fit in, the more I'm standing out, I'm just like, oh, oh, where's that party? Party over here, holla, holla, hey! Like a complete freak. <laughs> dancing through the club where no one else is dancing and like waving to people that aren't there. Hi, you know, they're not there. So then this guy comes up to me and says something I'll never forget. Mary Kate would like to talk to you. I'm cramping, hold on, I'm cramping. Oh yeah, and I go, what? Now what? I'm so sick of these celebrities confronting me, all right? And once you've had Whitney Houston do this shit in your face, You learn, you learn. So, I think it's good Whitney's getting divorced, don't you? I think it's a good thing. I mean, I mean, here's why. I think there's a chance we could get our diva back. You know what I mean? Because if she's with Bobby, we'll never get her back. But I think now at least there's a chance. Although I will tell you why I'm not 100% optimistic. You know who is at her intervention? Courtney Love. When Courtney Love is telling you you're hitting the pipe too hard, <laughs> that's bad. It's bad. I miss that show though, being Bobby Brown. I fucking love that show. Bobby! <laughs> Bobby! That crazy crack voice. All right. So anyway, I walk over to see Mary Kate, and there she is, cousin it from the Adams family. And what? <laughs> saying she's petite. She's petite and has long wavy hair. Like cousin it. All right, so now she's really, really cute. And she's dressed like a little hippie. She's got like a sparkly headband and bell bottoms. I was like, where's your tambourine? All right, so I don't get it. All right. So anyway, I walk over, or, over to her and I go, what's up fat ass? And um, what? She's a fan. She laughed 
And she took my hand and she was so nice. She goes, I just want to tell you, I think you're so funny. And I said, wow, that's really sweet. Thank you so much. And then I told her about being kicked out of her booth two weeks earlier. And she said, oh, that's terrible. If you ever want to come here, you can call me. She didn't give me your number, but it was a nice gesture. <laughs> For some reason. Um, and so uh, I said, well, you know, I really came here to gawk at famous people. So who's here that's famous? And she goes, well, right now it's just you and me. And I said, oh, that's pitiful. And then... <laughs> And then she says something that was actually really cute. She goes, but give this place 30 minutes and it turns into a celebrity f fest. <laughs> and she goes, oh, Kathleen, some of those priests hardly even touch those kids. <laughs> I have to tell you about, I went and did stand up on the Rosie O'Donnell Lesbians and Their Children cruise. You know how she does those cruises? Our family, a backwards R, yes. It's a ship full of gay acceptance. So I went and did, and it was really fun to do stand-up on the cruise. And like I said, I, I love her and stuff. Although I will say this, and lesbians, I know you're going to turn on me, but no one is more self-righteous about those goddamn kids than the lesbians. You know I'm right. You know I'm right. You know why? All their kids are gifted. Right? How come everyone's kids are gifted now? I wasn't gifted. I'm not gifted yet. But now everyone's kids are gifted. Right? This is our daughter, Hannah. She's two days old. She's gifted. <laughs> She's two days old. Oh, she's been tested. She's in the gifted program. <laughs> really? She just took a shit in her diaper. There's your gift. <laughs> Everyone's gifted. <laughs> and you know, you know what's worse is you know I hate kids. Isn't that terrible? I do. I openly hate kids. What? People always boo me for that. No, here's why. Here's why. Because, and you know I'm right about this, parents. Children are selfish. Am I right? Babies are the worst. Babies are me, me, me. Now, let me tell you something. The day a six-month-old asks me how my day is going, then I'll change my tune. So I'm going to do stand-up on the Rosie Our Family Cruise, and the Bravo people call, and they said, well, we'd like to film you doing stand-up on the cruise. We think it's funny. You hate kids, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, great. So they go, <laughs> I was like, I get it. So uh, they go, well, we have a proviso. And I said, what? They go, we kind of only want to film it if your parents go. <laughs> oh yeah, I know my place in this world. I'm the sidekick on my own show. <laughs> and by the way, how fucking funny are my parents on that show? <laughs> so funny, right? I know. So funny. Oh, and I love to tease my mom. I just love to get her goat, you know, because my mom and I are opposite. She's very, very Catholic. And I am what you would call a uh, fallen Catholic. I, yes, I'm not alone. I fell so far, I woke up in Beijing, but that's me. No, the worst is I really piss her off when I call the Catholics a bunch of kid f***ers. I know, is that terrible? She gets so mad too. I go, Ma, what are you following those kid f***ers for? No, wait, 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 here's her defense. Not all of them. I said, that's it, Ma, that's the best you got. And she goes, oh, Kathleen, some of those priests hardly even touch those kids. All right, so, so the Bravo people want me to call my mom and dad to try to get them to come to the crew, on the cruise. And I said, well, you know, they're not as mobile as they used to be. I'm not sure if they can, but I'll try. So I call my mom and I have a theory. And Catholics, you know I'm right about this. No one swears or uses the Lord's name in vain more than Catholics, right? It's that commandment we don't really take that seriously. You know, we try not to kill, but the swearing, not so much. All right, so I call my mom and she goes like this, what? We're not going on any goddamn cruise for Christ's sake. God damn it. Son of a bitch. Jesus H. Christ hanging off the cross. God damn it. Johnny, Kathleen's on the phone. She says we gotta go on some kind of a goddamn cruise for Christ's sake. I told her, God damn it, son of a bitch, Peter and Paul and the other apostles. What the Christ is wrong with you? Mary Magdalene and the saints. Son of a bitch. Well, what the hell kind of a cruise is it? Lesbians and their children? What? How the Christ do lesbians have 
have children. <laughs> Johnny, Kathleen's on the phone. She says lesbians can have children now. <laughs> well, I don't know either. <laughs> it makes no kind of sense. Last time I checked, you gotta have a guy involved somewhere. <laughs> For Christ's sake, God damn it. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Well, where the hell we gotta go? Alaska? What the Christ did the goddamn lesbians bringing those poor kids to Alaska to freeze their asses off? Son of a bitch, God damn it. Jesus Christ almighty. What the Christ are they thinking? Son of a bitch. Well, can't we go to San Jose or someplace nice? God damn it, and the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, whatever the Christ we're supposed to call him now. Can't even keep track, son of a bitch. God damn it, Pontius Pilate at the Last Supper, son of a bitch. God damn it, I mean it. God help me. I need a drink, click. Did something happen at the Emmys? So I have to tell you about my uh, experience at the Emmys. I'm a big fat Emmy nominee, everybody. Give it up. Yes. yes. Of course, <laughs> I'm a big Emmy loser. Oh, yes, big Emmy loser. All right, so I have to tell you about it. First of all, I have to tell you how I heard about it because I was on the Rosie Cruz in Alaska. I brought my assistant, Jessica. You know Jessica from the Bravo show. <laughs> Adorable. So Jessica went with me. All right, I don't know about you, but if you've ever been on a cruise, I don't think they're relaxing. I always think they're gonna be relaxing, but to me it's like being in the hospital where you think you're gonna get some rest and someone wakes you up every two hours. And on a cruise, they always are piping in those fucked up announcements, right? There's a jello mold on the Lido deck. A new minty jello mold. Oh, thank you, Captain. And so, so we're on the cruise, and then we were in Alaska going through Glacier Bay, and they decided to pipe the audio tour through at dawn, because that's when you got to see Glacier Bay. So I've got pillows on each ear, earplugs, I unplug the phone. I wake up, I plug the phone back in, there's a message. It's Jessica from her room, and this is how I heard about my Emmy nomination. Hey, it's Jess. You probably couldn't sleep either, huh, because of that dumb tour. <laughs> Yeah, I decided to just get up and go on the deck and check it out. It was kind of boring. I mean, I thought it was going to be like melting ice caps like an inconvenient truth and <laughs> families of polar bears and stuff playing with cubs. And it wasn't any of that. It was kind of boring. Oh, and congratulations. You are nominated for an Emmy. <laughs> I caught her up. I go, Jessica, you buried the lead. That's it? You could have started with the Emmy thing. So... It was a thrill, it was such an honor. I mean, I couldn't even believe it, but let's be honest. My category was a little um, D-list. First of all, you know that I wasn't in the fancy network Emmys. I was in the week before non-televised creative arts Emmys, or as I call them, the Shem Emmys. All right, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be honest. Okay, although let me say this. I was in the front row of the Shmemmies. I was the biggest star they had. Oh, I'll never be in the front row of an award show again. I was like waving to people, waving to nobody. It was great. So, but the category was hysterical. First of all, there's my little half-assed dog and pony show. Then there's Antiques Roadshow. Yes! With the two blonde gay twins. I don't care if they're married with kids. You're not straight if you know all about tchotchkes. Um, the Penn and Teller show, bullshit. Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer. No, don't you dare! <gasps> traitor! Traitor! How could you? And then the unbeatable juggernaut that is extreme home fuck over. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I found out that their Emmy-nominated Emmy episode was a special two-hour edition of Extreme Home Makeover where they build a home for terminally ill children so they can take in more terminally ill children to expand their terminally ill children's choir where at the end they all sing Amazing Grace and die. I don't know. I didn't watch the movie. I'm sorry. I am bitter. Bitter. So I show up. I got the fake hair, the long dress, the whole thing. And here's the worst part. They sit you near your competition. 
So I'm getting more bitter, right? I'm sitting next to Caesar Milan, and I'm a dog lover, but I'm thinking in my head, if he wins, boom, I step on the dog's head. I don't care. I don't care, there's your Emmy. And then, I thought, God help me if they sit me next to the kid in the wheelchair, right? From Extreme Home Makeover, right? With no limbs, just a torso and a head like Boxing Helena. Right? They win, boom, I knock the chair over. There, give me something to cry about. I'm bitter. All right, so. <laughs> the show is going on, and because it's not televised, it's four hours long without a bathroom break. I wish I'd had a catheter. I would have been like, Jessica changed my bag. So, so the show is going on and on, and I turned, I brought one of my friends, Adam, and I said, you know, there's no way I'm gonna win. And he was so nice. He's like, you have a chance. I go, look, I think I'm gonna lose and I don't think I should take it. And he goes, what are you gonna do? I go, follow me. All right, here's the thing. You know when you watch the Emmys and you see the girls in the five boxes, right? And then one of them wins and the other four have to do this <laughs> Not today. All right, so I was watching the timing of the awards and I noticed that they'd announce the winner, then there'd be applause, but then there'd be about eight seconds of downtime while all the people had to come from the back and go get their trophy. So I thought, that's when I strike. Okay, so then they announce the winner, extreme home makeover, applause, applause. And I sit there waiting patiently. Then the 40 crew members of extreme home makeover come to get, and my, my show has seven crew members, two of which are my parents with an Instamatic. So, <laughs> It's ghetto. All right, so we're waiting for them to file down, right? And I wait till the spotlight gets right in front of me, and that's when I strike. So I stand up and I go, F this! This is bullshit! I was robbed, and everybody here knows it. I showed up, I got the fake hair, I got the dress. F you! Everybody can suck it! Suck my dick! F you! So, and, then, and then my friend Adam played it up really perfectly, and he acted all flustered and like got my bag. And then I went out and I high-fived all the ushers. And this one usher goes, I had never seen this at the Emmys. I'm like, woo, what's up? So I take my train and I storm out and shit. And then we didn't even go to the Schmoveners Ball, f that. We um, went to In-N-Out Burger and had a grand old time. But anyway, I got in so much trouble, you guys. I got in trouble from Bravo, I got in trouble from the Academy. But I, you know what, I think it's a good bit. I stand by it. Um, <laughs> I just want to say that my little section, like I would say like the 15 people around me thought it was very funny, very funny. The other 5,000 people at the Shrine Auditorium, not so much. Um, but I thought if you're gonna do it, go big. Okay, so, so then first call I get Monday morning, right and early, one of my attorneys, he calls up, it was so funny, he goes like this, did something happen at the Emmys? <laughs> I go, yeah, I lost. <laughs> and he goes, did you, I, I just gotta ask you, did you flip off the winners of Extreme Home Makeover and tell them to suck your dick? <laughs> Okay, okay, I, I gotta make some calls. And then <laughs> he just had to apologize all day. All right, so I, I have to tell you about the last time I was on the Today Show. Because you know I'm banned from all the shows. I'm banned from, oh yes, I'm banned from Conan and Leno and Ellen, which that one hurts because I love her. But I get it, she's in the business of being nice to celebrities and I'm in the opposite uh, business. <laughs> right? Okay, so anyway. I got to go on the Today Show, and that's a big deal for me, right? A big national show, and I'm promoting my life on the D-list stuff, but here's the kicker. I got to go on the same day that crazy bitch Ann Coulter said that shit about the 9-11 widows. Remember when she said that they were a bunch of harpies who had it coming, and those guys were gonna divorce them anyway, like all that shit. Okay, so I'm watching the show, because I wasn't even at 30 Rock yet, you know, it starts at seven, and there's crazy Ann Coulter, who I will say one thing, I have to admit she does crack me up, and here's why. She's bonkers, but don't you think she's kind of like the naughty poster girl of those old conservative dudes, right? Like, you know when Rumsfeld is beating off, he's like, oh, suck it, Ann, right?
You know, you know Dick Cheney's like, oh, teabag my sh**, Dan. And she's on there at seven in the morning, in the middle of Rockefeller Center, in the, still working the black mini cocktail dress, like it's the 80s and she's in the Robert Palmer video. The lights are on and you're not home. All right, so that cracks me up too. So she's sitting there in the middle of New York saying these horrible things about the 9-11 widows. And you know how when you're sort of paying attention to the TV and you can't believe you heard it correctly so you turn into Scooby-Doo? So she's like, they're a bunch of harpies. And I'm a who? Oh. And then she actually said, they should take that money and keep their mouths shut. Who? Oh. Now, I will tell you that as an American, I was incredibly offended. But as a comedian. Come on. I live for that shit. I was like, Jessica, send her a muffin basket. So... I just, no, I just tell a guy, if you take me out to dinner, I'll totally f him. <laughs> so, it's time for me to go to 30 Rock. And being a D-lister, I am not being interviewed right there in the middle with the people with the signs, right? I'm being interviewed a block away at an unopened diner by El Roker. Fine, I'm happy to, I'm, look, I'm thrilled to be included. Okay, so he's got his card with the questions, right? And he goes, so, tell me about season two of my life on the D-list. And I go, what about that nutbag Ann Coulter? <laughs> she doing showing up at seven in the morning in a black cocktail dress who was she banging last night that she couldn't go home and change <laughs> so i do the whole interview about ann coulter at one point al roker just takes the card and just throws it on the ground <laughs> and then at the very end i just go tuesdays at nine <laughs> I walk out of the diner and one of the Bravo executives goes, you didn't even promote the show. And I said, well, Ann Coulter shouldn't have said that stuff. <laughs> so then she goes, okay, okay, we figured out a way for you to sort of promote the show. And I go, what? She goes, the guys from Queer Eye are here, the Fab Five, and you can stand next to them and wave as we go to commercial. I'm like, oh, sweet. So I go see those guys, which is my gay wet dream, right? I'm in just in oh, gay heaven. And I love those guys. And so then I see Matt Lauer and Ann Curry. And I know that I'm the first person to say this, but I gotta tell you, Matt Lauer is very sexy in person. He really is, he really is. He's too skinny the way people on TV are too skinny, but he's super charming and he knows how to work my <laughs> You know, now that I'm newly single, I know nothing about dating. I don't have game, right? Like, I just, no, I just tell a guy, if you take me out to dinner, I'll totally f you. <laughs> I'm a sure thing, I'm a sure thing. ABC, always be closing. I don't have time for the dance, you know what I mean? Halfway through the salad, I'm like, now, put it in. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't... You know, enough of the chit chat. Okay, so. So, you know, I get all nervous and Matt Lauer comes up to me. He grabs me by the small of my back and he goes, hey, sweetheart, and I f***ing buckle, right? <laughs> and I was like, ha, ah, ah. So, you know, when I'm nervous, I tend to say inappropriate things. <laughs> so I go, hey, what about that Ann Coulter interview this morning? And he goes, yeah, I know. And I go, you're not f***ing, are you? And... <laughs> And he goes, what? I go, you're not f***ing, are you? And then he said, not after today. 